Hello and welcome to our latest Gauss Society Youth Activity, our part two of Hidden Wildlife, funded by the Gauss Society. Now in this episode, we're going to be focusing on some small microorganisms living in amongst the soil. So we're going to look at those tiny animals that are hiding behind the soil grains. I'm also going to introduce you to the wonderful hidden world of moths. And we're also going to look at that amazing animal that is very hidden and only comes out in the summertime, the glow worm. So listen up and see what you can learn about other hidden wildlife. So this is my setup for finding out what's hidden in between the soil grains. This is called a Tolgren funnel. And what we have is in the surface here, we have some fresh soil and that's sitting inside a sieve. Now at the bottom of that sieve, there are small holes so that when those microorganisms feel the heat of the light, the lamp up here, and also see the light, they get away from it. So they go downwards, through the sieve, through the little holes, they fall into this funnel and then they're directed down the funnel into this tub which contains rubbing alcohol. Now there they will die and then we can have a really good look at them with a microscope to see what is hidden in between those soil grains. So I've left the Tolgren funnel overnight and this is my sample of animals, microorganisms that have come through. Just to get you that sense of scale, my camera can't even focus on them, they're so small. So we're gonna use the microscope. So this is a little mite. Now this microfauna, this tiny little animal, less than two millimeters across, is living in the soil, in amongst those soil grains, living off the dead organic matter, the soil, the dead leaves. And some of these are actually predators as well. So there's a whole range of these. In fact, one meter square of soil in our temperate forests can have up to 250,000 of these mites. Now this one here, I think, is a baby slug. And if you look very carefully, the one going towards the 10 o'clock, this is, I think, a tiny little columbula, a spring tail, with an amazing spring so that it curls its body round and can fire itself out of the soil and away from predators. Just to get that sense of scale, you can see the tiny little soil grains next to this burnt up one. Now, last summer, I set up a moth trap to try and find as many different moth species as I could in my garden. Now, you don't have to have a moth, moth trap to undertake this activity. But if you look on the Nature Days blog, then you can find out ways of attracting moths to your garden so that you can look at them just with a torch. So all you can do is you can set up a sheet and put a torch up in the dark, or you could put up some sugary solutions with some Coca-Cola with some sugar mixed into it, or you can make strings which have been soaked in wine and sugar. Why don't you see what you think about moths after I've introduced you to the ones I found in my moth trap? Ever thought that moths were boring? Come and have a look inside my moth trap. Now this has only been here for one night. But look at the colours on those. Aren't they so we're going to start with the most beautiful moth I think you've probably ever seen. Look at him. This is an elephant hawk moth. And we put egg boxes in here because it gives them something to perch onto. But it also means there's a real surprise because every now and again, you look in one of the little holes and you see another moth. But look at the colors on him. Nobody said he was going to be boring. So these beautiful pink. And if you look at the actual caterpillar for this moth, they're absolutely stunning as well. And these like to eat the um, nectar from honeysuckle. So we've got honeysuckle in the garden, which is why we've got them here. So this is probably the most common moth in our moth trap. We've got loads of them and they're all absolutely beautiful. And this one here is a puss moth. Isn't that one stunning? And look, you can see it's a puss moth, apart from the fact that it's fluffy, puss as in a, the pussycat, it's also got these beautiful antennae which are feathered and that's a really good distinguishing mark that tells us what kind of butter, uh, moth we've got here. 
we've got here this is a shoulder stripe I think and oh there we go there's another one there now moths is, are just the most stunning colorful camouflage you can see there so they look pretty obvious on this cardboard background but if this was next to the bark of a tree some of them would be very difficult to distinguish between the bark and we've got a little micro moth there those are the ones you probably think of as moths these are micro moths also really useful they're all pollinators they're all going to be eating a lot of the flowers that are around this time of year and also pollinating they're also the food source for an awful lot of animals spiders for the caterpillars and for some of the moths lots of bats eat lots of these and also an awful lot of the birds that are nesting this time of year are relying on these for their food source now the way, way to tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth is when they lie down when they actually settle moths will lie their wings flat against the against their back whereas a butterfly will hold them against each other up high so they'll be sticking out of the ground so if they're lying flat against the ground it's going to be a moth they don't all come out at night. You can get day flying moths and there's some beautiful ones like the cinnabar moth that are brightly coloured and you can find them in the daytime. Here we go. Look at all those elephant moths. See, those, these are small elephant moths. You can get bigger ones that can be almost you know, a few inches long. And we've also got an awful lot of flies down the bottom of here. And I think that's a water carpet there. Oh, look. Oh, more beautiful. I haven't even counted how many I've got here. I'm going to have to do a count now and a, a sort. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to do some moth counting and surveying. You don't have to catch them in a trap like this. But if you look on the blog, the Nature Days blog, there's lots of ways of attracting moths so that you can do some identification. You don't have to have a moth trap. And when you finish with your moths, if you do catch them, just very carefully see if they will come off whatever you've got them on, onto your finger. Good way of attracting them is to either use sweat or a bit of the sugary solution you might have used to attract them. And then carefully put them back into the, the food stuff that they like. So I'm going to take this one into a honeysuckle bush. Don't just let them fly off because then they'll turn into food for all the birds. And they're, you know, they're very brightly colored, they're very obvious, but obviously this is gonna come out at night to feed. So usually you don't see it. So this is not gonna be a good place for it to be let go flying because it would just become food. So I'm gonna let him go in the honeysuckle bush. So my challenge for you is to use my blog and make some attractors, put them out or before a nice calm evening where it's not too windy, bit overcast, no moons, even better for using light sources. And then go out just after dark, put your torches up behind your white sheets or have a look at your sugar traps and your, your um, wine strings and go and see what moths you can identify. And good luck. And if you want some help identifying it, you can email me at Nature Days or you can have a look at the ID guide, which is on the blog, the Nature Days blog. Please tweet any photos because these, hopefully you'll agree, are absolutely stunning. And it'd be great to flood Twitter with some beautiful moth photos. It goes back to the honeysuckle. There we go, have something. There we go. <laughs> he wants to stay on my hand. No, you're gonna go back. You're gonna go back to the wild. Look, there's some lovely food for you. Oh, there. Better. One of the best hidden wildlife features we have in Gower is glowworm. So here I've got one here on the edge of Kevin Bryn. Let's see if I can get a closer look for you. So when the female has got in the right position up a stalk or somewhere prominent, she will curl her tail up like this one is and sway it from left to right to attract the males. So you can see her swaying it right now. 
And there she is. You can see they have, she has two abdominal segments which light up and then two dots at the back. So she looks a bit like a Halloween decoration from behind. But if we look closely with the light, we can see that that's her bottom and her head is here sticking up. And she's got herself in a high position so that she can be seen by the males. And that is why she is glowing. And she's not a worm at all, she is a beetle. So this beetle here can't fly. The males can fly, females can't fly. And she is going to be staying quite static here. So I'm going to come back in the morning and see if I can find her. So there she is up close. So she's quite brown and dowdy. It's all really got, she usually has a white stripe down her back. But if you look her side on, she's got orange diamonds going down the sides of her body. That's quite a distinguishing feature. There we go. And of course, her glowing bottom. So two segments in the bottom of her abdomen. Plus the last segment's got those two um, glowing dots. And that's how she attracts her mate. So she'll find a nice branch that she can get high up, curl her body around so her tail sticks in the air, and so that the male can spot that. And he can come flying in. Now he can glow as well, but they're much less likely to glow the males because they don't really need to. And also the larvae can glow as well. And even the eggs can glow, which I think is rather cool. And they're quite ferocious predators and they eat slugs and snails and they have a venomous bite. So the larvae especially will feed on slugs and snails and they will inject them with poison and then they'll stay on their back and have a lift until they've died and then they can eat them. So pretty impressive predators, very well adapted to live in a range of habitats. Everywhere says you find them in Chalklands, but everywhere I found them is on the side of the roads in not really the most ideal environment, but absolutely stunning. So if you can get out when it's dark, have a look on the side of the road without your torch and you'll spot them way before they spot you. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed learning all about hidden wildlife. And if you haven't seen the part one, then please do check it out on the Nature Days YouTube channel or on the Gower Society Youth website. And if you've got any questions, please do tweet them, hashtag Nature Days or at Dawn Nature Days, or put them on the Nature Days or the Gower Society Youth Facebook page. Hopefully next month, we'll be able to meet face to face for our next activity. If not, there'll be another online video for you to explore next month. In the meantime, I hope you explore the hidden wildlife. Goodbye.